Hello everyone and welcome. We are almost ready to start, but let's wait a few minutes so everybody can get in. And today we are talking about comfortable and cost-effective calf bar. You only should be do it on that way that I would introduce you and you would introduce me. Mm, let's try. Okay. Would would you like to start like ladies first? But like... okay. Well, well. Uh, so let me introduce my my colleague Mario Posio, and she's an agronomist, and and she has been working in this 4D barn all the time when 4D barn has been existing, and she's coming from the dairy farm, and uh, and uh, she has been before she was working in the 4D barn. She was uh, running uh, running a. Uh, a very big calf barn, uh, like a farm, uh, which was it like 800 baby calves? 850 was, baby calves. 850 like baby 10 calves. 10 days to six months. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And and then she has then she has been as, uh, in advising in this local advising company, and now she works for uh, in 4D barn. And because of her, her background uh, with with this uh, calf uh, barn manager, she's really the specialist of calf uh, barns in our team. Yes, thank you, Yoni. And I'm going to introduce you. So this is my colleague Yoni Pitkaranta, and he is an architect, and he has been also working this 4D barn companies since the beginning. And uh, was it right, Yoni, that you have uh, drawn your very first cow barn when you were 11 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is correct. And since then, I have been doing those. Okay, so have you ever counted how many cow barns and calf barns you have like drawn in your lifetime? About 900 to 1000, something like that. Wow, that's quite many, quite many. So, and you were also, you were born in a dairy farm and, and that dairy farm is now run by your brother. Mm, yes. Okay, so maybe with first we could tell about something about about the 4D barn. Yeah, as 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 uh, designers or, or people who are drawing dairy barns, we always would like to think that uh, when you when you uh, build the perfect barn, everything will be perfect. But that's uh, un un unfortunately that is so. So you need to have all the all the other pieces, all the all the other pieces in the place. But uh, uh, anyway, 4D barn company. Uh, yes, we do designs, but we actually do much more than design barns. And our company, uh, in our company, the design uh, design process is kind of like a coaching process. So we always start about the management. Uh, so we design the management first, and that gives uh, uh, the deep understanding about the functionality, and and so that the barn is based on the management needs of this, that specific barn. And and this design we do. Uh, mostly for robotic barns, but we also do. We we have done also lots of uh, calf barns and heavy barns with that way, and um, and uh, in the end we will we will we will also also do like a de 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 we will describe those daily routines. Uh, they are illustrated on top of the layout as as like like working instructions, and and then we also do very fully detailed gate plans and 3D models of the barn. And all of that we do with the close cooperation uh, with uh, like uh, in our company, we have uh, we have in our team, we have uh, agronomists, we have uh, veterinarians and we have engineers. So we have a fully quite wide understanding about the whole whole project and whole barn functionality because of that. And our aim is to have a high work efficiency and production in those cow and calf barns. So that's our main goal here on these projects and oh, we have we are like an inter international company we have clients all over the world so we have clients from Canada USA here in Europe Russia and Japan so our headquarters is here in Finland and now we have done, done more than three, 130 projects around the world so it's including like those hafer robot barn and calf barn project yeah. Yes, and, and, yes, mm. and and mostly they they are robot ro they are robotic barns, but also also uh, very very many calf barns too. Yes. Okay, so I think many of you could 
really imagine this situation on your farm so i would like to have something else yeah and uh I, I'm expecting that quite many of you uh, come from the situation that you have cal baby calves on hutches, like in this picture on the on the left side. So uh, they are outdoors, and uh, as as we know that uh, when you when you uh, manage the calves in a hutches in a good manner, actually it's a very good place for the baby baby calves the calf health can be very good and they grow very fast but there's this human factor so uh it's quite labor labor intensive you need to work work in uh, quite often in a very very bad weather they can be wet and rain and and also also the for example bedding of these hutches it's it's not so optimal so uh that might be one approach that you would like to maybe think if there would be any better better solutions av available yeah <clears throat> and also some of you might have this kind of uh calf pans that you have put your calf inside the, some old building so uh, maybe some of you can have the calves inside a robot barn you know in a corner but there's also like many many issues on this so how you do the bedding do you have to do it by hand and how is the ventilation and how is the calls like do they stay health and everything so there can be there are good things but there are bad things on the, on both of these and this is the reason why uh very many people contact us and and they are like asking and talking that i would like to have the car i would like to have a calf bar so how we could get an efficient calf barn and thinking about the investment cost and, uh, and operation cost mm. yeah there are there are like these two two things which which are happening uh when we are when we are talking about the cost and cost efficient uh, uh, so that the barn would be cost efficient and it would be also operation efficient and this investment cost of course it, it, it's the thing it happens only once when you build it and uh, uh, of course we could run some numbers we could some run some euros or dollars or whatever but uh, it actually doesn't make sense because uh, there are people so, so many different places places coming in this meeting that it's very difficult to say uh, euros but uh, one thing what we know is that uh, because of these these uh, very strange times what we are living right now uh, the building price has increased uh, i i don't know uh, about many other countries, but like in, for example, in Finland, uh, they say that from from the year 2020, the prices are up about 20 to 25 percent, and we, we we don't know how they will come, uh, how much they will come down, uh, or if they come down at all. Mm, that's that's right. And when we are talking about operation costs, we mean those labor costs. So it's we have seen that that uh, even though you have a quite kind of same calf barn you can spend there maybe two hours in the morning or three hours or even more so and because the labor is coming more and more it costs more and it's hard to get so it's really important to think about the labor cost and then we when we talk about the productivity then we have to think about how the calf grows and how they stay health and this is the key thing how how we like manage the calves and what kind of calf bar we are going to have in the future yeah and in this picture this is a uh uh golf barn of our design with uh with 72 places in the middle of inland and was it only that it was built 2019 was it so 2020 ready 2020 okay yeah. and it had like 72 places yes. right yes okay so how much space calf bar needs if we think about the calf itself and and other things like storages and that kind of stuff yes uh in in situations when you when uh when when you start the the a calf starts her her or his life in the single box we typically see the minimum space to be about 2.5 uh, square meters typically 2.5 to 3 square meters but then uh when we think about the baby calf uh, in a group pen uh then we 
then we count minimum 3.5 square meters per calf and that's that's a straw area and and so if you if you also also put this for example like a eating platform in addition to that then we are about in the level of about four square meters that that is roughly the space how much they need and you and it, so it's so that it's under the three months right before exactly like, yeah and you, so if it's even more when the calves get bigger and they get older so this is for the baby cows which get like which are on their milk feeding period yeah yeah and then, the, yeah and then yeah then when when we look this uh whole space what we need to build we typically are in the level about nine to ten square meters per calf including the calf kitchen and uh, and uh, we need to have places uh, uh places for storage things we need to have places to maybe to move calves we need to have places to storage all kinds of things and and this is something what we see that quite often people are neglecting these spaces and this if you are for example you don't have enough storage places the that can really increase your labor quite a bit okay so if we go back to this picture do you remember remember what was the dimension of this building for example uh I don't remember. I, I think uh, I don't remember, remember the dimensions, but that, that specific barn, I remember that they, 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 that ha they had nine square meters per calf, so mm -hmm. nine times 70. So I think it's about 400, 480 square meter. No, it, it's, it's actually more. It's about about 650 square meters. OK, so it's quite big. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what ways do we have to, if we want to decrease the building cost, so what ways do we, we can use? Well, again, this is very local. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good thing is that that uh, calf barns typically are, and they should be narrow buildings. Uh, I would I would say that maybe maybe maximum like twelve meters, fourteen meters is the maximum width because of the because of the ventilation. And because of that quite uh, narrow building, uh, it's actually the construction is uh, they, they, they can be quite simple and they should be very simple and they could be also quite light. So they could be very simple wooden buildings or they could be even even advanced with with this uh, um, like a greenhouse type buildings. Of course, uh, you need to take this functionality into account. But anyway, the building itself, the housing barn itself could be very, very simple. And then uh, reusing existing buildings, uh, we will talk in the next, next slide more about renovating uh, calf barns, but maybe this is more about the calf kitchen. And this uh, lower picture, you can see the calf kitchen, which we think is very important uh, uh, for, the, for the people. So Mario, what, do you, what, what kind of things you would say, what, 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 do we need, what is the calf kitchen? Can you tell about, about okay, that? Okay, so... so we, like you see in the upper picture, that that is, of course, the temperature when you have that kind of uh, calf calf barn. The, the temperature is just the same at the outside, but the calf kitchen should always be a warm place because you wash buckets and nipples and that kind of things. That should be warm, and also you can see these uh, uh, the uh, uh, drainage, 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 drainage should be really good. So because if you use milk powder or milk or whatever you you do in the kitchen, you should always be able to clean those floors easily. And also you need a lot of space because you have buckets and everything. So it should be place for everything. So it's easy to work. Then you find things easily. And typically our calf kitchen are minimum 30 square meters mm. so they should be enough large yeah and because of because of the, uh, first of all because they are warm buildings and there's quite a lot of technology and and like plumbing and uh, electricity things they are also quite expensive so the reusing existing buildings for example would mean that maybe if you if you are able to use for example your existing old facilities for that and then you just build build a new house for for calves so then you actually you are fixing fixing the issue with the with the uh, with the with the animals so that they they get good uh, they can get good good building and then later on you will build for yourself this calf kitchen and before that for example you do some compromises in your labor but the first phase is that you you secure the calf housing and cow uh, cow uh, calf environment to be the, in the good level 
Okay, so you talk about the, the you reusing the old buildings. Could you explain that more? Yes, quite often, uh, especially if there are farms which are moving, for example, from uh, Taistal barn to build, build, for example, like a new robot barn. Uh, sometimes uh, these uh, these Taistal barns uh, could be something which you could use for for baby cal baby calves to renovate the, spa the, the, the spaces there, and. Uh, uh, to, to, to think about that, there are a few things what you need to take into account, and it's very important this, so that this functionality is something what you need to be, you, you need to secure, you need to have, you can't compromise functionality very much, although you would do the renovation. Ventilation is very important, we will talk about that a little bit, little bit, little bit later. And, uh, and then I, I think, it, uh, we, we, for example, we have done one project in Japan, where uh, we, we, we used this old Taistal barn and we could use this old milk room uh, as, a, as a calf kitchen. And that is very good way to also save some money. But also you need to look very carefully. If you are investing uh, the old facilities, you need to think that what is the, what is the expected life, life time for that building. Uh, if, the, if the concrete is very weak and the building is almost <laughs> about to collapse, don't build anything to that. So the building must be in the good condition. And the thumb rule is always that if you are doing some renovations, you should think the cost of that project to be 50% uh, or less about compared if you, if you would building something new. So this would be like the kind of like a thumb rules if you are thinking about renovation. Okay. So then we talk first. We explained how the 4D barn work, and like we are very interested where the where the time goes, and especially where the time goes in a robot barn, and where the time goes in a calf barn. And this is our posted report. So uh, we have made this farm visit farm visit during during the morning shift and we have the special ap application where we can like uh, <clears throat> we follow the uh, workers and we measure with that application how much time they spend in the in the barn in the like a cow barn and a, and a calf barn and here i have like three different farms and their results from this calf barn and this first farm have 65 calves. The second farm have 25 calves. And this third farm has 40 calves. And these are like those calves, baby calves, which gets, still get some milk. And like you can see, it's, there's a lot of variation between these farms. Like this first farm spent like one minute and 10 seconds per calf to this milk feeding. This second farm spent 20 seconds and this third farm spent one minute and ten, ten seconds per calf, and and I have to say that these are the best farms we have like measured. Like here, you can see the uh, average numbers, so they are very close to those average. So they did all of them made a really good job. Yeah, and you can uh, you can you can see also those total times there. How much in total? Those which are in red, you can see how much these farms were spending spending in total in hours and minutes, and then how much that is per per per, per calf. And this data is very interesting and really shows that uh, sometimes there are farms which are very labor efficient uh, with their cows, for example, a robotic barn, but then they have a, then they have an old calf barn and, and, uh, and then they actually, the, they are very, they can be very labor intensive. And that's why we have really been starting to focus on this labor efficiency also in the calf barns. Yeah. So Mario, you, you noticed that there, were, there was this farm number two. So they were yeah. they had this twenty seconds. So uh, what was the what was the reason why why this farm was so much better with the milk feeding? Okay, so the reason was, was that they have this uh, milk taxi system. So they feed all the cars with the milk taxi and these buckets. So in the single boxes and also in those group pens. So and the all the baby cows are very close to the each other, so they are not spread around in the farm. So they all are in this under the same roof. So that's why they are so labor efficient in the milk feeding. 
Yeah, and this system is something which which uh, you get advantages also of of uh, like like in the indiv individual feeding. So this is actually in our projects we have quite much used this kind of uh, feeding feeding system. Yeah, I think most of our farms choose mm. to have this bilk taxi system today, so because we have seen that it is very labor efficient when you do it on the right way. So that is a good good option for every farm. One of the learnings what we have found out in this uh, this measurements uh, measure, measuring labor times in Kalpas that that automatization is doesn't doesn't explain things so it's it's uh, the, the 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 things how you design things and how you manage them that that makes the difference. Yes. So maybe you could do some calculations. So if you if you have calves. So how much time you spend with your calves in a working shift? You can count total of time in minutes you spend, for example, in morning and share with the number of the milk fed calves. And then you get the number approximately. Yeah, this would this would be like a, a nice, nice, like like to tool to think that where, where you are with your calf uh, today's situation with your calves how how labor efficient you are and if you if you want you can you can like put your number to the chat uh, if if you if it's okay for you <laughs> yeah and i could tell that the best results we have have those boosted visits i think was under one minute per calf and the if I wouldn't say the worst, but the, who spent the most time in, in the calf barn, they spent almost 12 minutes per calf. So there's a lots of variation on those numbers. Yeah, that was one of the foundings, the, the, the huge variation. Mm, that's right. Okay, but these are the things that affect the labor efficiency in a calf barn, like the, these are the most effective thing so the simple loo to deliver the milk drink so like i said every baby cow should be under the same roof and very close to each other and you should have like if it's possible only one milk feeding system like milk taxi so if you have many of those how you heat the milk and how you deliver it always it's like uh, it takes more time to like feed all the baby cows and like, like Yauni explained, there should be a lot of space because that affects how do you do, do the bedding. Can you do it by by machine or and how often you sh should do it? Because when you have a lot of square meters, then you have don't have to do the bedding so often. And well functioning calf kitchen is also very important. So it you can clean the buckets easily and everything is in on the right place. You can find them like fast and you don't have to spend time to finding things and doing it that doing in a like a not so good way. And like I said, all the gas calves should be under the same roof and manual removal and bedding should not be like a handwork. And I don't mean by you should have a, some kind of like a, uh, a spray, scraper. Scraper there or that, yeah. but it means that if you have those those uh deep those uh bedded, pens, pens, yeah. bedded back pens, you should be able to clean them by machine. And this ventilation thing is the very, very important too. And maybe Yoni, you could explain that little bit yeah. more yeah well like 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 one 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 title here is this healthy calves mm. i would say quite many of the many many of these things that they they will they affect the calf uh, calf health health and mm. and as you know that uh, healthy healthy calves are very very important uh from also from the labor efficiency uh point of view so mario when you were working in that large large calf facility uh, i think mm. you have may, said many times that the mo it, it was very labor intensive this this uh to treat those uh sick sick baby calves yes because we didn't have a good ventilation there because they, it was like a warm calf calf barn the temperature was always over plus 10 and we didn't have a lot of space. I think we have the minimum amount there and I had to do the bedding like every day and and like that kind of things. I didn't have a calf kitchen. I have only one, uh, maybe two meters wall, one sink, and then I have to like clean the buckets in the floor. So it was many things weren't there so good. So I have learned my lesson how to do proper calf barns. Yeah. 
Okay, so then let's talk about the ventilation. So the question is that how should I ventilate my calf bar? And in this picture, uh, this is the, this is a uh, uh, design of uh, us a uh, uh, calf barn in in the, in the middle middle of Finland, and uh, you can see there this this uh, black overture tube. But we will talk about that a little bit later. This one, so there are small holes in it. Yeah, and is it? And this was built like two thousand twenty one. Mm, yeah, it has been there like one year now. Yes. One year. Mm. Yeah. So the rec recommendation for the uh, ventilation rate uh, with baby calves is that you need to you should uh, change the uh, air three times per hour uh, in the winter uh, when when it's cold. It's, it's like it's like a like a minimum minimum ventilation rate. And uh, because of this uh, this large uh, ventilation rate uh, in a cold weather uh, and cold uh, with the time, for example, it actually means that uh, the temperature inside in the calf barn will be about the same as outside. So there is actually not not big difference. So it means it's minus twenty five outside, it's minus twenty five in inside. Mm, yeah, roughly something like that, mm. because calves are not creating any heat. Yeah. And why ventilation is so critical for the cause? So, so these lung diseases occur in a poor ventilation. And like here now in Finland, the temperature drops under zero. And I, I have had a lot of calls from farmers that could you please help me? I have a lot of like diseases in my barn. So what we could do with the ventilation so that I wouldn't have so many sick calves. So this is the time I call for the calf barn ventilation. And these lung diseases slow down growth, and this poor growth affects negatively, neg like negativity for the lactation cow milk production because they, because the calves don't like uh, they don't grow in the when they are small they grow when they are in the first lactation period and they cannot like produce milk because they are still growing. Yeah, you could also say so that very, very many of uh, farms they have very like high high level genetics, and and this new new generation baby calves are the like the best gen genetic background. And you, uh, uh, I think you should think so that you really should give the best possible environment for those uh, your future future uh, baby uh, your future future cows. Okay, and this barn is in the northern part of Finland. I think the winters can be there very rough and it can be like minus 35 outside. But still they wanted to have this uh, like non-insulated calf bar. Mm. Yeah, and and uh, most the projects what we are doing they are with side wall curtains, as you can see for example in this picture. Uh, but uh, the difference uh, compared to the milking cows uh, in the ventilation is that the calves are not they are not creating enough heat, so that they could create this chimney effect uh, in a calf barn. And this chimney effect means that the animals would heat the fresh air which is coming in, and that that heated air would go out from the chimneys or for or. or from openable ridge, and uh, one one baby calf uh, it, it generates about one one hundred watts of uh, uh, like heat, and if you for example if you compare a cow, cow creates about one point five kilowatts of, of heat, and there's a big there's a big difference, and calves just don't create that enough, and although we we could have a uh, uh, openable side side walls, uh, and we would expect some wind to, to kind of change the air but that's not happening uh, the, the wind is only now and then and uh even though it would it would be there it, it doesn't doesn't really affect very uh, much to the to the baby calves uh this uh micro environment and then we could talk about this calf bun over pressure too what we saw in this first picture so it's like a it's a, like a fan and this tube it's all just designed to your calf farm. They are not all the same. It's not just a fan and a tube and a hose. It's always calculated by every for every calf farm individually. And it works in a new, but also like a renovation facilities. And the minimum ventilation is when you have this winter tube. It's a little bit smaller than the summer tube. And the summer tube is something you can put in all calf farms. 
Yeah, they, we we are seeing also more and more interest towards this to this uh, summer tube, so that we really uh, we really also in the summertime try to secure the good ventilation and fresh air to the baby cows. And this is something, is especially if you have if you have limitations uh, to open side walls, then this uh, this um, uh, summer tube uh, makes more sense. So, how much this kind of tube ventilation system costs? about what do you have to buy <laughs> yeah again it's very difficult to talk about the prices because also these prices are different based on country but you need to you need to uh you need to have in your system you need to have a fan uh, and of course some kind of like an electricity system to run, uh, which is running this fan you need to have this hose or this tube and uh, you need to have a calculation, uh, calculation and instruction manual how to put this tube and how to make the holes in that and which size the holes are and which how these uh, holes are located. And then you also uh, need to uh, have some labor time to do the installation. Typically, it's not very big deal, uh, maybe a couple of days uh, for the for the installation. Uh, so you can do it also you can do it yourself but there are also companies who are selling kind of like ready ready made packages so that you, there's like a like a fan and fan and this tube and everything is as a package and also maybe installation can be included so you can you can do it in two ways depending of your market area okay so what are the compromises you must not do ever ever when you are design, designing a golf barn so the first is ventilation the second is how much space you're going to have with bear calf. And the, the last one is number of animal places in a calf barn. Yeah, this number of the animal places in a calf barn means that if you are, you count the number of the baby calves, what you average uh, normally you will have. Uh, we we need to take into account your car, like 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 the animals, animals with you, with you most, most of the animals, you're very likely you will sell away and and uh, also the calving cal calvings are not, are not even every month so there's quite a lot of this fluctuation uh, how much baby calves uh, what you raise you will have and because of that when we when we calculate the number of the baby calves uh, to the certain farms we always double this mathematical number uh, and that gives us enough flexibility uh, to have the size sizes enough big and it's funny that uh, we have never ever heard anybody to complain mm -hmm. that uh, they 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 built too big calf barn, too big heifer barn, too big cow barn, or too big manure pit or uh, feed silo. <laughs> so it's always when you're always thinking uh, about the size, maybe you should always do it slightly bigger in, to avoid that situation. You mean double the size even? No, maybe maybe not the double, but maybe <laughs> 10, 20 percent more always. Okay, okay. <laughs> So, how we could help you if you think about the golf barn facility investment? Yeah, quite often uh, when 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 you start investing investing something, you always need to have a plan in your farmyard where to locate buildings, how to how to orientate orientate the buildings in such a way that you you have a, you have like a like a roadmap to grow so that all the buildings are in the right places so that's that's why that that's why we we always and quite often we start our projects so with so called invest service where we really look the big picture and your your future strategy maybe up to 20 years how the farm can grow and where to locate all these all these buildings and this is typically uh, the, the very first step and then uh then the design service is something uh what what uh, we do for 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 for, for uh, robot bonds and for heavy bonds and for calf bonds and in a calf bar calf bond situation that means that we actually first first when we start start to do the design and discussion with the farmer we actually design the management first and typically in those meetings uh uh farm uh, invites their most important advisors uh into that meeting and we really think in a very detailed level all the tiny things what you need to, what you need to do with the baby calls and and this way we find the right management first and then we start to build on uh, the design based on this management and and then we check that with with the, our uh, uh, working simulations working instructions and we why we kind of show the working routines on top of the on top of the layout and then we then we really can get the barn which has the right type of management 
and it's the barn is just right design for that management. So, like we have sometimes explained our way how the works. So it's kind of like a making a movie. Your calf barn is like a movie, but first we have to have a script before we are going to like produce and film the movie. So there's some quite many steps before before we have this layout kind of yeah. ready movie there. So I think it's time of spend some time for that because it's like Yoni said, it takes maybe could calf barn stays. They're like 20 years easily when it's properly designed. Yeah. And then, of course, we have like quite a lot of content in our website. Uh, and we also have e-academy, which, uh, which with, with, there are some seminars and there are some e-learning courses. They are mostly about the robotic robotic, robotic barn related things. And uh, then also in our YouTube channel, we actually have also like this one uh, uh, video about this golf barn, which we showed one picture. So there's a YouTube video about about, about that. So you can also go and take take they can see that and we also do this over pressure tube calculations so if if you if you are interested only about this this tube ventilation so we can do the calculation for that too okay and maybe the easiest way to start with us is like this we wanted to offer you this free 45 minute meeting to talk about your project so you can book it sending me a like an email maria.posio at 40 barn.com so it's so it, so we could like take a look more closer what kind of things you would need in your barn in the future yes okay thank you very much uh, and uh, now uh, we would like to uh, like to hear if you if you have any questions uh, what, what are your thoughts and and because actually the, the group is not so big we can be very like like you can uh, you we can, can open our cameras and put yeah. your microphone open and everything be whatever suits you. So, so if there are, if there aren't any questions, maybe, maybe we could uh, maybe, maybe, maybe make a question. <laughs> I noticed that there, there was, for example, uh, Ekils, uh, a veterinarian from, from Latvia. So Ekils, uh, what, what, do, what do you think you, you have visited in very many calf barns? What, 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 what are your experiences? What is the, what are the critical, what are the critical <laughs> things in your, in your opinion? <laughs> uh, you know, everybody, of course, it's, uh, same problems as you mentioned mm -hmm. and it's uh, ventilation it shortcuts in uh, labor efficiency and it's uh, planning the general planning uh, how uh, my farming will look uh, after five years ten years and so uh, i think we are too busy to spend enough time to to project uh farming uh, and, and this is, is a main uh, shortcut and i am really happy that you focus a lot of on on labor e efficiency i think uh, calf health and labor efficiency needs briefly yeah same problems ventilation mm. labor efficiency and and something like that yeah thank you yeah okay uh yanis pastors has raised a raise a hand do you want to do you want to make a question <laughs> hello yanis hello <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, I have uh, several questions. The first one is, uh, how many, uh, you said that the calf band shouldn't be wider than 12 meters. Uh, mm -hmm. How many rows of uh, those um, uh, boxes it would be optimal in uh, 12 meters, like just two or three or four? How many can you? So you'll be single boxes. Yeah, single box. Well, like you, you, you usually you put them in a row, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So, so two rows or or more. Well, uh, uh, two. Uh, we think that two rows mm. is 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 a maximum. We we typically typically uh, don't 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 do more and i know that for example in the united states some some people are even think that even even that is maybe too much and they they will choose at one row but i would say these two rows is a good a good standard mm -hmm. yeah but then the, the building will be very long or or i will have to uh, build the uh, two buildings if i have uh, if i don't have a space enough right 
Yeah, that's true. That, that's going to be very long, or then you have to put two buildings like like this way. But the, that is because of the ventilation. If you want to have a good ventilation, that's how we end up of going. Yes. And and we also actually we have we have done some projects uh, so that the, uh, they, they they have been so called like 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 hybrid systems so that there is there are in the, in the beginning the baby cars are in single boxes and then the mm -hmm. later on they are the, they are in those all in all all out group boxes and it's like 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 a L L shape so that this bigger smaller ones are here and bigger ones are here mm -hmm. and that was for example in one farm because of the site was limiting us to make a very long building so it's also a little bit uh, related what is your what is your building site. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. Uh, so if I uh, must uh, have two buildings, then what should be the space between the buildings? Half bounds? Well, there is uh, there is not uh, any kind of like clear thumb rule, but I would say that the minimum the minimum would very minimum would be the same as much open space as is, uh, what is your width of your building. That is that is the very minimum level. But of course, the more the more the better. But I would say that would that is that would be the minimum. Okay. Um, uh, and um, so, what would you recommend? Is the single boxes or group boxes <laughs> that is a good question and it depends on your management i wouldn't say that go with the single boxes with the, all the milk feeding period i even if you want to have a single box then single boxes then i would go this pairing system but it, it depends on your management how you want to like because there's so many options but what, what is the method for calves what do you, i do think uh if I look out, like they like they are like social animals, I would recommend at least have a pairing system or the small group system. Either one of those are good, but not like just single boxes. I mean, the, the group uh, group boxes would be more space efficient, I believe, uh, or or no. Maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit. Yes, that that mm. that's that that's correct. It maybe saves saves some square meters. Mm. One of one of the things what what we also uh, very much focus on is that the group size shouldn't be too large. If you if you are doing group pens, uh, Mario, what do you say? What do you say? What would be the maximum size of? I would cars? say six cars per group. Okay. Mm. Uh, but can you group them uh, from the very beginning or or? Uh from the first day or not uh well when i was working in this calf barn this when we have we have like 40 calves in the one group and what is the like okay that's not maybe another like a good um like example, a good ex example. example but the first day it's really hard to teach the calf how to drink and if you have many calves in the same group even four or six cows can be so many. It's hard to teach the youngest ones to how to eat if they are older ones. So that's why I wouldn't go straight to group pens. So uh, uh, um, when they learn to eat, then you can group them, right? Uh, yeah. After they have learned to eat. Yeah, that's the key point, yes. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. And then Andres, Andres Aunis has also raised raised his hand. Yeah. Yes, I, I just uh, wanted to add a little bit on the discussion about mm. uh, the the calf pairing system. I think the the most uh, reasonable thing to do is uh, do not rem uh, do not forget that uh, after starting the week three. Uh, they have a decline of uh, immunity from from the mother and and it just uh, it sort of try not to group them at week three uh, but but just to remember that up until 14 days it's okay but uh, if if it's not possible to manage it at uh, until 14 days then try to move it past day day 25 maybe Mm. So do it uh, later, maybe. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That that's it from me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
So I can I can also also see there is a, that there is there is Egbert uh, Egbert from Holland. So Egbert, uh, you also have been uh, uh, like touring Kalpans qu quite a bit. Uh, what 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 are what what are your thoughts and what how do you see you you are mostly mostly working working in Holland and also in Germany. What kind of like problems or challenges you see the Kalpans uh, Kalpans there? Yes, I will leave my uh, camera out because there is a lot of sun coming in, so that's a good point. <laughs> okay, uh, it, we, we would we would enjoy we would, the sun here yeah, in Finland. Would you give me uh, some sun? <laughs> yeah, but we will also uh, featuring uh, some cold temperatures uh, in the next couple of days. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yes, um, my experience is that that um, rearing calves um, is quite challenging sometimes. Um, and we, we sell uh, barn equipment, so also for calves, but we do also the tube ventilation. Um, I have the very good trainer for that in the, the very beginning. So uh, we do it for uni, we think about more than six years, I think, seven mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And um, um, just to, to, to the starting point is that, that um, a, a new facility is not always the key for a success um there are also some some other things uh, maybe even before the calf is born which is uh, important like the quality of colostrum mm -hmm. um how to manage the, the dry period of, of the cow so um sometimes it's yelling so i see very new very nice and, and well-designed buildings and uh, still sick uh, calves uh, being inside and then farmers are consulting us for hey, what can we do with ventilation and, and things like that mm -hmm. and sometimes you see very poor buildings and and you see uh, very shiny calves and and no no sick calves at all so it's not always very very easy but i think number number one um, important thing is not overcrowding i think that it, that's mm -hmm. on very top level mm -hmm. so you can you can all have the things right but when there is overcrowding uh, I think nothing will work. The right design will not work. The right ventilation mm. will not work. Uh, the right manage management will not work. So uh, keep that square meters and, and the total square meters, which we started with this course in the beginning, keep that in, in mind. Um, the, the other thing is, is um, uh, hygiene. Uh, that, that, that's quite important to, to, to keep the things clean, to, to get rid of flies, uh, fly management and, and and uh, pesticides and no, not pesticides but rats and mouses in in, in uh, away from the feed so to the hygiene point is is also very important um then um coming to the point of of ventilation um uh, we have quite a lot of experience with designing and installing tubes uh, we, we we offer the whole whole package and um to be honest, I have the best results with tube ventilation in a completely closed barn system. Of course, it will also work with in combination with natural ventilation, but um, it's not, not always easy to get grip on, on natural ventilation, uh, for example. And um, uh, we did, um, I think, in total 27 tubes at uh, CRV AI company from bulls from four months to the very old bulls, which have an approximately weight of, of nine uh 900 or 1000 kilograms maybe and they did it because of the blue tongue disease to to get the flies uh away and and that's why they closed their bonds completely completely get rid of, of natural ventilation and we put air in with tubes and we suck air out with chimneys um and we are a little bit higher than with the uh, number of air exchanges per hour and uh, when I see my projects, I did some more for, for example, we, uh, a farmer who translated uh, a poultry barn into a calf barn because the, the, the ventilation of the poultry barn, the exhaust ventilation was already existing. And we added a tube and, and uh, results are, are great. So no, no single calf coughing. And um, sometimes uh, natural ventilation is challenging because natural ventilation you can't, can't control. You only said that in, in the presentation earlier when there is no wind, um, natural ventilation will not, not work. And then you have uh, positive pressure tube bringing the air in. But uh, the air exchange is also the number of uh, cubic meters of air which is, is going out. So that are uh, the, the challenging things. And you have to keep that in mind. And um, yeah, the, my, my uh, key for success is to, 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 to look around and, and ask the right people to, to help you with it. Okay. Yeah, and again, I think that like 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 uh, Egbert was saying that the, the ventilation is really it's really on the on the on the 
key here the ventilation you, you should you should do it right yes right yeah okay i think we have a one question in chat yeah uh, Janis, Janis has raised his hand. Janis Pastas has raised a hand. Uh, uh, yes, one more question. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if we are talking about the cold barn, mm -hmm. um, and let's say I adopt uh, the the gr uh, group boxes, um, what about uh, the the cold temperatures? Let's say if it's minus uh, thirty degrees, then it's going to be also minus thirty degrees inside the car barn like right now we use those hatches and in the hatches uh, uh, it's probably also not uh, the same temperatures outside but but still uh, it's probably at least it seems that they are kind of more protected from from wind and everything uh, what about uh, those uh, cold barns do you do the calves uh, uh, live in this open box and and uh, that's it, or, or do you recommend to use some, some, some uh, those vests? No, the, the, those uh, calf jackets. Jackets. <laughs> uh, how, how, how is it uh, uh, done? Okay, so we recommend to use those calf jackets and also lots of bedding, straw in the winter time, and maybe Yoni, you could explain more about how we avoid the wind in those uh, pens. How we so we don't put them too close to the wall and that kind of things how we can uh, yes we need we need to uh of course we with with the sidewall sidewall curtains uh mm. the, those those must be the ones which really are like taking taking out uh, taking out the wind that is that is uh, very important and like I said we we quite often we have an, like an alley between the between the wall and the, and the pen where uh where, where the baby calves uh, where, where, where it's, it's alley where you can for example where you can move them and uh, if, if you look at look to, to go to our uh youtube channel maybe maybe one of somebody of our team could put into the chat this link to this uh youtube youtube video this barn is located in the very northern finland and they have really faced this minus 25 mm -hmm. minus 30 celsius decrease there and they say that it's 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 working okay the thing is that you need to take you 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 need to uh you can't have this like draft there and but the thing is that when the temperature inside and outside is the same uh the only way the only one which is creating kind of like a draft is wind so we just need to get the wind away and and then they are mm. then, then then they are like like uh we, we can we can we can manage that mm. Maybe only you could now take the question from the chat. Yes, I uh, let's yeah, I was yeah. I noted that. So uh how many empty places did you say I should have per calf? So 20, 30, 50 percent. So uh, uh again, this this how how we how we kind of like think this is that when you count your mathematical number, how much baby calves uh, space you need, uh based on your calling rate, uh and uh, and number of the number of the cows. Uh, you should like like uh, like that that number like times two so it's like 100 percent more than than the number what you are what you were counting on so there needs to be lots of flexibility uh in your calf one and one thing is also that uh when you are for example uh when you when you when you clean when you, uh, when you take the baby calves away uh then you then you it's good that you will keep this area a little bit uh, sometime empty and and so you should always have some empty uh, empty places mm -hmm. in the gulf one too okay maybe we have time one more question and there's one ask for uh, yeah, egg, 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 egg. Mm. yes 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 one additional thing to the to the cold uh the cold barn thing the question uh, we had before of uh, Janis, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit off the record uh, because it's not recommended by the, the calculation system from uh, Wisconsin University. But um, very critical times in a year with tube ventilation in in um, and I'm not sure about Finland because we are facing there much more uh, lower temperature. But uh, for Central Europe, for example, is the springtime or the early spring after winter because then you have sometimes quite hot days and, and quite cold nights. And then it, a tube could, even if it's well calculated, it could affect a little bit of draft on the cast. That's my experience in, in I think about three, three barns and um, I did in, in Europe. Um, we have there very good experience with 
a, a very simple climate computer who measuring the incoming air. So then he's when you measure only the air inside, you're always too late. So we're measuring um, air coming in by a temperature sensor, and it drops a little bit speed of the uh, fan who's bringing in, in uh, the air inside. I know it's a bit off the record, uh, Yoni, <laughs> but uh, I have very good experience with that. And the same happens in, in a bit in, in, in autumn time, but then you, you have a little bit of a risk control by uh, uh, dropping too much cold air on the baby calves, even most of the time the youngers group um, in, in that critical time of the year. So, so you say that you it drops down. So, can you say any like percents how much you are using typically? How much you are dropping down the speed of the of those fans in tubes? In that when you do that, yeah, I can say that it's it's not dropping. Uh, yeah, it's, it's dropping. The, the the system is then also temperature controlled. Mm. So it's measuring the, the 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 temperature inside the barn. But what that sensor is doing, that is he is um, scaling up the bandwidth. The bandwidth is. Uh, the, the number of degrees between minimum and maximum ventilation. So in summertime, it could be only three degrees when he's speeding up from minimum to maximum. But um, when the temperature outside drops, you can bring that to 10 degrees. So then he's not ventilating that much aggressive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, like, like always, things develop. Mm, yeah, it's, it's not a way to to do promotion of our company. But if you have questions on that, please contact Uni, and uh, we can figure out something together for you. Okay. One very last question uh, from Yanis, and then we we say goodbye. <laughs> yes. Um, about the tube ventilation. So, mm -hmm. if I have uh, individual boxes, then I understand that that this tube is just right above the, the the box but but how uh do you install the tube when you have a brew box which of course is much uh, wider and uh, like deeper do you have s several or uh, or is it still enough with just um, one okay let me see if i have the yeah. picture here like here in group boxes you have ah, okay here so one tube still yeah enough. yeah when is the uh oh, when the high, high, height, height. height is enough then we can manage with the one tube huh. and like here see in single boxes when the height is enough then it's not just about the single box so it's quite high here too it yeah, depends on the building Okay. And, and yeah, and, and we can we can also do this. Uh, if you have two rows of single boxes, then we can also use the, uh, do that with uh, with one tube. Again, like Maria was saying, it depends mm. of the height of the yes. height of the building. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Here I see uh, like a interesting configuration. It's yeah. four rows, but yeah. with... we we do sometimes quite interesting layouts based, <laughs> yeah. based on the inter <laughs> discussion with farmers. <laughs> yes. Yeah okay thank you okay thank you okay i think it's it's uh, two uh, two o'clock uh, finish time and i think it's uh, time to say goodbye and uh, goodbye and, and thank you about participating to this webinar and like I said uh, this will be recorded so you will get uh, a link to this recording later uh, i think it's like tomorrow or something i think inside two days okay yeah. inside two days yes and and then you can take it again look at that again and like i said if you if you have any any interest uh to this uh to this uh to talk more then just book the time with mario and and we we can we can set the meeting and talk with you more individually okay thank you everyone and it's really nice to see you and if you have any Id new ideas what we should talk next time so please let me know you can send me an email. Please make a webinar for this topic. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, and and have a have a nice Christmas. Is coming closer, and as you everybody know that Santa Claus is coming from Finland. So we already have seen the Santa Claus uh, uh, putting the sleds behind the reindeers, and I think it's it's coming soon now. <laughs> okay. A lot of presents. Yeah, a lot, yeah, of, presents. With, with lot of presents. Yes. yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> thank okay. you, uh, for the team. Yeah. Thank you very much, and have a thank nice you. have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.